Hey friends, it's Alex here at The Code Wolf again, and we've got an exciting video topic to go through today. This video is actually going to be the first in a series of videos about the new Azure OpenAI service. Now, if you've never worked with AI before, don't worry, this is going to be a simple and approachable introduction. We're going to start out by working with the AI service through the Azure portal and through the Azure AI Studio, just to get a feel for what the capabilities of this service really are. Now, later in the week, I'm gonna start posting some videos that go through actually coding against this service and starting to build applications that leverage its capabilities. So remember to hit subscribe and stay tuned for that additional video content. So to kick things off, let's create an OpenAI service through the Azure portal. After we create the service, we'll explore some AI basics but it can be helpful to see what this actually looks like before we dive in. So from the Azure portal, let's search for Open API or just choose it from the homepage if it's there. And the next screen will look like any other resource listing page in Azure. So let's click Create at the top. Now on the Create page, you might get this warning at the bottom that says Open AI is currently only available to customers through an application form. This is enforced per subscription. There's a link you can click here to apply to try and get access. I was able to get access, but I'm not entirely sure what all of the criteria is. If you're unable to get access, I still recommend watching this series to stay in the loop until this becomes available to general public users. Obviously, AI is only going to get bigger and bigger. For now, I'll switch to my other subscription that does have access, and then I'll create a new resource group for our AI services. The region setting here is actually kind of important in this case. Certain AI models are only available in certain regions, but I know East US is currently one of the most well supported, so I'm going to leave that one as is. Finally, I'll give this a name and then select the only pricing tier that's available. I'll hit next to view the network settings and leave the default of all networks enabled. We can skip the tags page and finally validate and create the resource on the final step. This can take a minute to run, so I'll pause while that finishes. Once that completes, I'll choose go to resource. This page should look similar to any other service in Azure. We have familiar options along the left nav, such as various networking and identity configurations, as well as monitoring features further down. Many of these will become more important once we start coding in future videos, but for now, let's click on the model deployments. Models are actually managed in Azure AI Studio, so let's click the button to jump over there. This will actually take us out to an entirely different site with all kinds of features to explore. Over on the left nav, we have two primary sections, which are Playground and Management. Playground allows us to experiment with deployed AI models using chat or completion features that we'll look at in a moment. And in this case, I also have access to a preview of Dolly, which is an image generator that we won't cover right now. The management section is of course used to manage our deployed models and work with data sources if you want to start bringing in your own data. Again, that's something we'll look at in more advanced scenarios later on. For now, let's create a deployment. Along the top, it says that a deployment provides endpoints to the Azure OpenAI base models, or even your own models. For our purposes, you can essentially think of a deployment as an API or interface to underlying pre-trained AI models. If you've ever experimented with ChatGPT, that's an example of a UI around a pre-trained content generation model. Azure OpenAI service essentially gives us access to those underlying AI models programmatically or through tools like this studio. So for now, let's click Create New Deployment, which will open up this simple dialog box. We first have to choose a model. In this case, I have three models available, but there are actually more than that depending on what you've been approved for or what you have access to. Different models excel at different tasks. For example, the GPT 3.5 models we see here are general purpose content generation models that can understand and generate natural language and code. These models are optimized for chat and various completion tasks, such as writing instructions, summarizing text, finishing sentences, generating new content, performing basic analysis, and much more. In comparison, the DALI model is used for generating visual images, though that isn't an option for new deployments here at the moment. 
So I'll pick 3.5 Turbo and then give this a name and finally click Create. This deployment can also take a few minutes to complete, so I'll jump ahead when that finishes. So our deployment is now ready, but how do we actually use it or interact with it? Well, there are actually a lot of ways we can do that, including programmatically or through a REST API, but for now, let's just use these built-in UI tools in Azure AI Studio. Over on the left nav, let's select the chat option, which will open up a page that lets us interact directly with the deployed model, similar to ChatGPT if you've ever experimented with that. It essentially creates an AI assistant that we can talk to that leverages our deployed model. Now on this page, we have three columns. The left column allows us to set up and configure the AI chat assistant, which we'll look at in a moment. The middle column is where we actually talk to the AI assistant, and on the right, we have some additional configuration options and parameters. Remember, the AI assistant is powered by that 3.5 turbo model that we deployed. So to start with, let's just say hello to our AI assistant, and it'll respond back immediately, of course, asking how it can help. So from here, I can say something like, give me a recipe for a chocolate cake. And sure enough, over a short period of time, it will piece together a response for us. I don't bake well enough to know if this will taste good or not, but I have pretty low standards for cake, so it's probably fine. So this is great. We have a general AI chatbot going here. Well, things get more interesting when we start to tune this bot. Over on the left, we have some template options for how this AI assistant should behave. For example, we can tell it to mimic an Xbox customer support agent. So let's select that and that'll reset our conversation. Now when we type hello again, we'll get a more specific response. We can also ask it more detailed questions and hopefully get more optimized answers for this new situation. So for example, I'll test out, write me a marketing pitch for Game Pass. It'll respond immediately with relevant text, which is impressive stuff. You can also create a more custom assistant that meets your own requirements. For example, if I change the template to empty, down here I can write pretty much anything in the system message as instructions to the AI assistant. So I'll input something like, you are an AI assistant who speaks in old English. And then let's hit save changes to reset the chat and now see what this gives us. When I type hello this time, you can see that we get a very custom response that may or may not be what we're looking for. Some of this just comes down to trial and error, but it's certainly fun to experiment with. It's also worth mentioning that you can adjust additional parameters over on the right. For instance, we can set the maximum number of response tokens, which controls how long the response can be. We can also change other settings such as the temperature, which controls the randomness or essentially how neutral the response is, is another way to think about it. There are some other settings here as well that we won't get into, but I encourage you to explore them. Now, those conversations with the AI assistant are obviously driven by the prompts we write and input. Prompt engineering is actually a pretty in-depth topic well beyond the scope of a simple intro video. However, in basic terms, you can essentially think of a prompt as a collection of tokens sent to the AI to generate a response. The AI models process text that's broken down into tokens, which are combinations of characters or pieces of words, sometimes whole words, if the word is short. Azure OpenAI consumes these tokens and feeds them through trained models that predict the most likely or desirable result series and then send that back to the user. It's important to understand that prompts can therefore take various forms and structures and knowing how to engineer them can have a big impact on the results that are sent back. Prompt engineering is even an emerging field of work right now and has a big impact on the success of the AI result sets. To get a better look at different types of prompts, let's navigate over to the completions page to see how this works. You can basically think of completions as another term for the response from the AI model. They're called completions because they are completing the input prompt you provided. Prompts are the information we feed the AI model to try and get the response back that we're looking for. They can be used to help the AI complete all kinds of different tasks. Now, as a quick side note, you'll notice this message along the top that says these completions work best with the text DaVinci model. However, at the time of this recording, that model was recently deprecated and I'm no longer able to deploy it in this environment. The replacement for it is supposedly a model called GPT-35 Instruct, which is also not available on my subscription at the moment, so we're just going to stick with our current model. 
The results won't be as impressive, but they should still give you an idea of how this would work if the right model could be deployed. So here in our completion playground, let's take a look at some examples of different types of prompts. The examples dropdown has a number of options for us, but let's choose generate a job description to start with. This loads in a prompt telling the AI to write a job description and provide some basic requirements. When we hit generate, the AI model will attempt to complete the prompt and write up a job description. You can sort of read through it as it streams in, and sure enough, it's creating relevant content, so let's let that think for a moment. I recommend making adjustments to the sample prompt as well and see how those changes influence the completions. You can also adjust the settings to the right to change the max length of the response, the randomness, and so on. Now I want to reiterate that all of this behavior can also be accomplished programmatically through code. We'll look at how that works in an upcoming video. We're really just scratching the surface here. You can of course also load in your own data sets for the models to analyze, fine tune all of your settings, engineer more compelling prompts, and so on. Hopefully this gives you a general idea of how the OpenAI service works and what it's capable of, and I hope you get the chance to experiment with it and brainstorm your own ideas for it. Please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you next time.